Wow. I'm Rick Johansson, and this is Iron Echo Design. <laughs> Request comes in from Ada Hanacek. It's time to do a map tutorial, I think. I write, I think you're right. Also had a request for a Paris map video. Ada responds, that was also me, which is great. I do like doing these tutorials. I want to test out the new performance upgrades with Inkscape 1.3, which we're using today. We're going to get the data from OpenStreetMap, and I'll show you how we can work with it to create a map like this. So let's go to OpenStreetMap. It's a great free resource. This is my home Boston. Let's type in Paris, France. If you've never played with OpenStreetMap, it's a great tool. I'll go to copyright. It's open data. So as long as you follow the guidelines for attribution, you can use it for commercial purposes, but they don't let you take all the different versions. If you click on layers, they've got this beautiful version here. The only one we can download the SVG file as standard. Go to standard. And if you click on share, you'll see you can change the format to SVG. That's what we need to pull it into Inkscape so we can work with all these different components as vector assets. The biggest challenge from previous tutorials is it's a big, massive file. And one way to help with the size is to click on set custom dimensions. If you click on the dots, you can move it around and you can stretch the actual area by using the corners. And depending on the map you're using, it could be okay to leave it like this. But another way to really make sure it's not too massive of a file is on scale. For Paris, what we're gonna do today will be scale one to 450,000. If I hit enter, it'll immediately begin the download. So let's first make sure it's in the right spot. I know I want some of the water features. So once you have it the way you like it, you can hit enter or download. Depending on the browser you're using, your downloaded file will be sent somewhere. For Chrome nowadays, it goes to this little icon here. Drag it onto your desktop. And then from that folder or from the desktop, drag it directly into Inkscape. You'll get a dialog box. Make sure you have include SVG image as editable object. 300 DPI rendering, blocky, optimized speed. Okay. When I was setting up for the tutorial, here it goes. I was using a 25 megabyte file. It was a little bit too heavy duty. This right here is 18 megabytes. First thing you notice is there's a bunch of stuff we don't want. For the minimalist look, we gotta get rid of things. The easiest way to do it is to click off of everything. And for whatever map you're using, you're gonna have some gray or a water feature. Click on the gray and try to isolate a piece right there. We don't have to click on all the different pieces. It's too busy to do that. Go to edit, select same, fill color. And that takes all these gray things. Delete. Right off the bat, a little bit cleaner. If we zoom in some more, I can click on one letter. Text can be funny. Is this a fill or a stroke color? Let's open up the object fill and stroke menu. With the C selected, I know it's a fill because stroke is, there's no stroke on that. So since I know it's a fill, I'll go to edit, select same, fill color. And that's going to pick out all the letters all at once. Delete. You can also get this translucent look like it was an outline of the letters. And when I clicked on it, I see fill is empty. That must be a stroke. I also see there's transparency. I can go to edit, select same stroke style. It's going to take all of that. Delete. Same thing for these translucent things. All you do is select one, edit, select same stroke style. It grabs them all. Delete. You don't have to do select same, select all. You can also just grab the airports, get rid of those manually. I see a background here, this gray, delete that. At this point, everything else I actually want to use, except maybe this purple diagonal line. What is that? It might be a subway or a railroad. It's gone now. The two key steps to making the minimalist map that we want, we have to thin out all the roads, and I want to isolate the water feature. Let's get the water first. Now I know because I did this exercise already, part of the water is a stroke and part is a fill. Because with this selected, the stroke is blank, I know it has to be the fill. Edit, select same fill color. I don't want to mess up all the roads. I'll just do control G, which is group. And if I slide this off for later, I see, well, there's some more water feature. That's got to be a stroke. Yep, there it is. So edit, select same, stroke color. I'll group that, control G, and we can put the two water features together. They're both selected, control G again, and put it aside. Here's the big test for the performance upgrades with Inkscape 1.3. Let's make a bounding box over everything. Got a lot of selections there. Pull open our fill and stroke. If you click over stroke style, all this stuff, I don't even care what's selected. All I want to do is reduce the width so we can make these really thin roads. You don't have to labor over it by doing it all manually. Just change the percentage. Let's do 40% 
So we're reducing the width of everything to 40% of what it used to be. Enter. Here's the danger zone, not responding. And it just went through. Okay, so it didn't crash. Click off of everything and looks a lot better. Now, because I want my final design to be white, I could change the page background under document properties. But why don't we just go ahead and create the shape we're going to eventually stamp out and we'll drop it to the bottom under hierarchy. But it's clashing right now. But if I make my bounding box, we're all set with the width stroke style. Let's go to stroke paint. And I found dragging in the color wheel, if you have this up, has a bit of a lag. Why don't we just enter for lightness 100, enter. That's the same as dragging it into the white. I can see all of the strokes turned white. I have these other things that are still there. And the fact that they're colored in means that it's some type of fill. Why don't we cheat and go over to the fill tab and just turn it off, no fill and click off of everything. Sometimes it has to look messy before it can look beautiful. I've got some box here, let's delete that. Once you have it all monochromatic, you can then see, you know what? We need to make this thinner. Everything selected, same step as before. Go back to stroke style. Let's drop this down. Why don't we do 35% of that? Enter. There we go, that's what I want. That, that's actually probably better than the example. I just wanna see the contrast and I like how what used to be a fill is now lighter. So you can kind of tell that was a park or whatever it was. Let's bring back our water feature. I want this to be on top, right like that. Got the water selected, let's change it to the green and we'll take it to the very top on hierarchy up here. In the original request, Ada wanted a circle, and I think the circle map is cool, but when it was just a plain circle, it was too plain. I like having this extra ring. To piggyback off of, I think two tutorials ago, I showed masking, simple masking techniques. If you remember that lesson, rather than do a clipping object and only get one shape to stamp out, if you do a mask, just think of it this way. Whatever is white colored in the mask will be taken, whatever is black, will stay and not be taken. All this is, my mask I made, is just a white circle with a black ring. I'll group that together actually. So this is just my mask. I'll change the opacity temporarily. Masking does take into account transparency. So this is just to see where we want to put it. But we have to group the underlying object. Control G to group. Bring our mask into place. Critical step, take the transparency off so it's full opacity. That's how a mask is gonna work. Mask is selected, hold shift, grab everything else, object, mask, set mask. <laughs> That's it. I thought I was getting multiple requests, but it was the same person. Hopefully this is what you wanted. And I want to sign off by saying goodbye in French. Just kidding. I forgot to mention, if you want to help support the channel, the new Iron Echo website is live. There's channel merch on here you can take a look at. If you're not into that, maybe you're into music or science. Every single one of these designs I made with Inkscape. Take a look at this one. Do you remember cassettes? What tool do you think I used to make this? Trace bitmap, that's right. And if you do want to pick up anything, the promo code LAUNCHPARTY will get you 20% off. All right, au revoir.